It's universally known that humans can commit horrible acts when their identities are hidden from the world. William Golding, in his novel Lord of the Flies, portrays that most humans are innately savage and only act civilized under authority. Once they find a way to conceal their conscience, they become dehumanized and destructive. A similar theme is used in several horror films by masking the villains' faces in a way to conceal their identity and conscience and give them a psychological green light anonymity to commit crimes. We're here with 15 of the most legendary villains in horror stories that take this concept to a disastrous extent. Let's dive in. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. It was a freak show. Leatherface. One of the most horrifying masked killers originated from the 1974 film The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's terrifying to see someone slaughter a number of humans, but to witness them slicing the skin off their victim's face and wearing it as a mask is another level of grotesque. Bubba Sawyer is the man behind Leatherface, the masked killer who follows the orders of his cannibalistic family. It's inspired by the real-life serial killer Ed Gein, who used to exhume corpses and craft masks from their skins. In most films, he wears a white shirt with a black tie and uses a yellow apron while butchering, while his weapon of choice is mostly a chainsaw. It's often depicted that his face is disfigured due to some disease, and he's also mentally impaired due to the manipulation and abuse by his family. Although the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise has nine films, the horrifying masks stay prominent in all of them. The most chilling masks worn by Leatherface are the original killing mask, a stitched mask, the skin of an elderly woman, and that of a pretty woman. The sequels depict different reasons for Leatherface to wear a mask. Most common of all is to hide his deformities and insecurities that give rise to his lack of social skills. It acts as a shield against the world, allowing him to become a more confidently vile killer. Leatherface is often cited as one of the greatest horror villains who had a significant impact on pop culture, influencing two video games, a novel, several comics, and films that include alternate versions, prequels, and remakes. Michael Myers. Michael Myers first appeared in the 1978 film Halloween. Michael Myers is one of the most iconic horror film villains. He's often seen as silent and emotionless as he relentlessly pursues his victims. He's also known as The Shape because of his featureless mask, which was originally a Captain Kirk Star Trek mask that the production team painted white and altered to look creepy. They did a pretty good job as this masked maniac holds the standard by which all the other masked killers are compared to. On Halloween night of 1963, the six-year-old Michael Myers murdered his elder sister, citing that the voices tell him to do things. He gets institutionalized at Smith's Grove Sanitarium under Dr. Samuel Loomis, who tries to help Myers, but after seven years of failure, he realizes that Myers is pure evil and must be locked away from the world. Fifteen years later, on October 30th, he escapes the sanitarium and returns to his hometown to kill his younger sister. He steals a mask from a hardware store that is eerie and expressionless, along with a blue jumpsuit that becomes his signature look. Myers kills multiple people associated with his sister during the chase, but fails to kill her. And in the sequel, he decides to kill his niece after finding out that his sister has died. He's most famous for his invincibility, which is due to his inhuman strength and endurance. Leaving his impact on the horror genre, Michael Myers started the trope of an unstoppable silent killer influencing multiple slasher films and villains. Michael's lack of motive for killing people and his determination to chase the victims down make him the most horrifying masked killer. Jason Voorhees. With a rather sad childhood, Jason Voorhees turned from a victim in the original Friday the 13th to a culprit in the sequels. He was born to Pamela Voorhees in a small town of Crystal Lake, with mental disability, facial deformities, and an abnormally large head. When he was in Pamela's womb, she believed that she could hear his voice. The same year, after suffering another series of abuses, she killed her husband, citing that Jason told her to kill. She disposed of his body and moved to Crystal Lake, where she homes 
homeschooled her son. Jason grew up to be an obedient kid who never questioned his mother's authority. Pamela was later hired as a cook at a summer camp, and not having enough money to hire a nanny, she took Jason with her. Jason was heavily bullied by the kids there, and was thrown into a lake and presumably drowned. Two teenagers who were supposed to be the counselors on the lookout for the kids were busy making out when this incident happened. An enraged Pamela killed both of them while never being suspected of their murders. She then prevented the summer camp from opening, and 20 years later, when it got revived again, she killed every single employee in the camp until she eventually got decapitated by a counselor named Alice. The second movie marks the return of Jason, as it turns out he was still alive and living in the woods. After finding out that his mother was killed, he creates a shrine for her with her decapitated head and tracks down Alice to kill and offer to his mother. He then continues killing people at the summer camp as a vicious killer with a sackcloth on his face. The infamous hockey mask with red stripes makes its appearance in the third film, where things go haywire. Jason is killed with an axe through his head, but is revealed to be invincible when he wakes up in the morgue in the fourth film. He continues his killing spree in Crystal Lake, chasing a smart kid who mimics Jason's childhood self to gain some sympathy. We get to see Jason's monstrous face in this film, which is horribly deformed. He is finally killed, and his legacy is continued by another man in a hockey mask with blue stripes. But Jason is persistent as he is revived from the dead by lightning and comes back as an undead creature. He's then thrown into Crystal Lake, only to be revived again in a later film. After being killed millions of times, he is killed by a magical dagger. But hold on, he comes back as a spirit, possessing people and sending them into a killing spree. There's even a post-apocalyptic version where Jason fights future humans and robots in space. In another film, he gets to have a face-off with Freddy Krueger in Hell. The final installment of the 2009 film is the reboot that brings back the original film nostalgia. The franchise has a total of 12 films, and the fans still await the future revivals of the invincible Jason. Ghostface. Inspired by the Edvard Munch painting, The Scream, Ghostface is a Halloween mask sold as a father death costume. It became even more infamous with the Scream film franchise, elevating its Halloween status to another level. The Scream film franchise involves the serial killings of the residents of Woodsboro, California. The killer who wears the father death costume in the films is known as Ghostface, and his identity is always anonymous, which keeps the viewers and the main characters guessing until the final reveal. The motive behind the killer differs in every film. For Billy Loomis, it was revenge against Maureen Prescott, whom he blamed for his parents' separation. Although Stu Macker claimed that he was peer pressured and influenced by Billy, he seemed to be having too much fun during the killings. Nancy Loomis wanted revenge for her son's death, while Mickey Altieri wanted to be famous. Roman Bridger in the third film was seeking revenge against his mother for abandoning him and his sister. Jill Roberts was motivated by jealousy and desire of fame, partnering with her lover. Charlie Walker. The decade later installment of Scream 2022 featured Richie Kirsch, who was disappointed with the latest installment of the Stab franchise, the fictional movie series based on real life Woodsboro killings. His aim was to revive the film's standard by giving them a better killing spree plot. He groomed and partnered with Amber Freeman, another Stab film fanatic. The latest installment of the film Scream 2023 involved Detective Bailey, who is seeking revenge for his son Richie's murder. He involved involved his son Ethan Landry and daughter Quinn Bailey in the killings. The killers wear masks to hide their identities and keep up the legacy of the previous Ghost Faces. The Ghost Face film franchise has built a cult-like following among the horror fans, being widely recognized and inspiring various adaptations, including a TV series that aired on MTV and VH1. Dr. Decker. The 1990 film Nightbreed, based on Clive Barker's novel Cabal, features the mysterious masked killer named Buttonface, played by David Cronenberg. Living a double life as the Buttonface and a psychotherapist, Dr. Decker initially appears to be a supportive doctor trying to help his patient Aaron Boone, who suffers from horrific nightmares. In the meantime, he disguises himself as a Buttonface with the mask that has buttoned eyes and a zipper mouth and kills entire families including children, in a gruesome manner, believing that he's cleansing the world of filth. Being highly intelligent and manipulative in a deeply disturbed manner, he convinces Boone that he himself is 
the reason behind all the killings occurring in the town. Believing that he's a monster, Boone tries to end his own life, but ends up in a psychiatric ward where he meets another patient who tells him about the Median, a society of monsters living under the cemetery, citing that it is the place where all the monsters are welcomed. Boone escapes the hospital and goes to the Median, where he encounters various monsters who are suspicious of his intentions. He gets bitten by one of the monsters before fleeing. As soon as he comes to a clearing, he gets framed by Dr. Decker for the murders and is shot dead by the police, only to rise back up as the monster Cabal. Boone becomes a part of the monster society. Dr. Decker finds out about the Nightbreed and deeming them as abominations, he convinces the authorities to eradicate them all. The film ends with a war between the Midian monsters and the humans, where Decker too is killed and later revived as one of the monsters. Karl Ruprecht Cronin Dr. Cronin is a fictional Nazi scientist, first created by Mike Mignola in his comics Hellboy. Although not noticeable in the comics, he becomes a violent villain in the film adaptations directed by Guillermo del Toro. As a child born in 1897 Germany, Cronin became famous for his beautiful singing but lost his voice while progressing to puberty. This led to his distaste for the natural order of the world. He was also consumed with the hatred towards the awkwardness of his own body, which became a root cause for his masochism. He first started hitting himself with an oak branch and soon became obsessed with performing surgeries on himself where he removed his own eyelids, lips, fingernails, and toes. This left his body completely fragile, and he took extended measures like designing a mask and bodysuit to protect his body against germs. Later, in his quest for perfection and expertise in mechanics, he started believing in the fusion of robotics with human bodies. In 1930, he became a loyal follower of Grigory Rasputin, while working with Ilse Hopstein and Leopold Kurtz on their project Ragnarok. They aimed at creating a doomsday weapon to end World War II in the favor of the Nazis. Becoming the head of a German group called the Thule Society that was obsessed with the occult, he started dabbling in dark magic. In 1944, he helped Grigori perform a ritual in Scotland to summon Hellboy. However, the ceremony was interrupted by another troop, and Hellboy was adopted by Professor Trevor Broom. In the fight, Cronin lost his left hand before becoming impaled into a wall. Cronin still survived and reappeared in 2004. He used dark magic and engineering to modify his body, resulting in his inability to feel pain and being able to survive without oxygen, food, or water. He built himself a mechanical left hand, a steel rod replaced his broken spine, and his new clockwork heart helped him increase his speed and reflexes. The blood in his body had dried up, making him immune to gunshots and he possessed the ability to extend sharp blades from his hands. Another remarkable feature he engineered was being able to switch off his body while remaining in a dormant state and appearing dead. He used this ability to infiltrate into BPRD headquarters, where he resurrected his master, Grigori, and murdered Professor Broom. This prompted Hellboy to avenge his father's death by crushing Cronin with a gear wheel, although it was later revealed that Cronin had survived yet again. The Masked Purgers One of the most horrifying fictional realities depicted in the films involves the concept of purgers. In the historical context, a purge is when a group, including the government and society, executes the people they consider undesirable. For instance, in 1937, Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin started the Great Purge to eliminate the members of the Communist Party and whoever he considered a threat. This purge went on for more than two years, executing roughly 1.2 million people. This concept was introduced in the horror world with the 2013 film The Purge. It's set in the dystopian future of 2022 America, where the nation observes an annual event called The Purge, making all crimes legal for 12 hours. This leads to chaos all across the nation, where people either kill or try not to be killed. The Purgers possess all kinds of weapons, like shotguns, handguns, machine guns, axes, and knives. They wear the creepiest masks to conceal their identity and to mask themselves from the judgment of their family, friends, or acquaintances. With five films, one TV show, and multiple purgers, this franchise has given us some of the most iconic masks used in films. From the first film, we were introduced 
to the smiling masks with a sinister smile and hollow eyes, the sack mask with holes for eyes and real human teeth, and the horned mask. From the Purge Anarchy, we have the Face of God mask, which has God scribbled on its forehead, and the Cross mask, which is painted on the Purger's face. The Purge election year includes the haunting Black Face mask, the Kiss Me mask with half-closed eyes and shark-like teeth, and the Uncle Sam mask worn by a Russian leader who doesn't want the Purge to end. The Collector. Featured in the 2009 film The Collector and the 2012 sequel The Collection, the masked serial killer was named The Collector by the authorities based on the pattern of his crimes. He was born to an entomologist and a museum owner who went insane after ingesting some chemicals meant for taxidermy. He killed his family, stuffed them, and placed them at the dining table, pretending as if they were still alive. His son survived his attack and lived with the trauma of seeing his father turn violent. After growing up, he followed in his father's footsteps and chose to become a licensed entomologist. However, under the facade of a normal man lived a sadistic killer who posed as an exterminator and set ruthless traps all over his targeted house. He then kidnapped and murdered the chosen family, leaving one of the family members to add to his collection. This person got brutally tortured. Their body parts were severed and reassembled to look like insects before being added to his collection. If they remained alive after the procedure, they were drugged to such an extent that they went insane, turning into zombie-like creatures. The collector wears a latex mask that is black in color with a dark gray accent and covers his entire head and neck. In both of the films, the collector is stopped by a brave man, Arkin O'Brien, who first came to steal from his targeted family but gets trapped in the house that the collector had set up for his torture. Arkin tries to save the family but ends up only saving the little girl Hannah before he gets trapped in a red trunk by the Collector. In the second film, he escapes but is forced into the Collector's lair to save a socialite's daughter, Elena. The Collector manages to escape, but Arkin tracks down his real identity. We never get to see his face as Arkin throws him into a red box, promising to give him the taste of his own torture. Hear me? Hello? The Strangers. Released in 2008 with a psychological horror film of the same name, The Strangers are a group of three masked psycho killers that invade the lives of innocent people to feed off of their fear by terrorizing them. These intruders include two women in the dollface and pinup girl mask, and a man wearing the scarecrow mask. Dollface is the mask of a smiling woman with a big eye, blushing cheeks, and pouty lips. It hides a blonde-haired young woman who speaks in a flat-toned whisper. She seems to be the most insane of the three. Pinup Girl is the mask of a curly black-haired girl with pink eye shadow, a blank expression, and blushed cheeks. The girl wearing it is the most mysterious and mostly stays silent. Scarecrow doesn't usually have any lines and wears a cloth bag over his head that has a small grin drawn over it. They usually choose an abandoned house. First, Dollface knocks at the door and asks if an unknown girl is home. Then they come together to silently break into the house and lurk around, moving objects, observing their victims, and staying behind the scenes like creepy psychopaths. They soon make their presence known, elevating the fear and chaos unravels. After torturing and terrifying them, they tie the victims up and reveal themselves before taking turns at stabbing and killing them. Other than being a bunch of sadists, there seems to be no apparent reason for their actions, which makes them even more sinister. Although they have no empathy for others, they seem to care for each other. As in the Prey at Night sequel, the Scarecrow gets enraged when the girls are killed. In the 2024 version of the film, the Scarecrow and Pinup Girl seem romantically involved with each other. The original film, released in 2008, had a sequel in 2018, and in 2024, a reimagining of the film was released called The Strangers Chapter 1. Chapter 2 will be released in September 2024, while the third and final chapter is expected to be released in 2025. <laughs> The Phantom Killer. The 1976 film, The Town That Dreaded Sundown, is loosely based on a real story featuring the infamous Phantom Killer, who terrorized the town of Texarkana after the end of World War II. The case was known as the Texarkana Moonlight Murders, which involved a masked individual who would kill couples in the town while wearing a pillowcase-like mask over his head. The film tried to recreate the Phantom Killer with exact official descriptions of the killer's personality. He's a ruthless, cold-blooded, and insane murderer 
murderer. Intelligent and crafty in his killing, he used various methods to murder his victims and relentlessly hunted down the ones who survived. He tried killing a total of eight people and succeeded in murdering five. The 2014 sequel features several copycat murderers who are inspired after watching the original film. Although the original Phantom Killer was never caught, these cheap copies were killed towards the end of the film. Jigsaw. So far, we've covered the killers that would kill for either their pleasure or for no reason at all. But John Kramer, famously known as Jigsaw Killer, is one with the God Complex, who believes he has the right to punish people for their deeds. He's the main antagonist of the famous Saw franchise that has a total of 10 films that expanded into TV shows, video games, comics, books, music, and many more endeavors. Instead of killing his victims directly, he captures them and puts them through several tribulations involving physical physical and psychological torture to test their desire to survive. He believes if they survive, they will be rehabilitated. John Kramer is introduced as a civil engineer who was married to Jill Tuck and founded a rehabilitation clinic for drug addicts. Jill was seven months pregnant, and the couple had already planned their lives around the kid's arrival. But one night in her clinic, Jill was pushed by one of her patients, Cecil, as he ran off with stolen medicines. They ended up losing their child, which threw John into a dark spiral of depression drawing him away from his wife and work, ending in the divorce. He began regretting letting his wife help people like Cecil and exclaimed that they should help themselves. John soon got diagnosed with colon cancer and even got rejected from getting his health insurance. He eventually became terminally ill and decided to die on his own terms. So he drove his car off a cliff. To his surprise, he was still alive and his survival skills kicked in as he pulled out an iron bar from his stomach. He realized that people understand the value of life only in the face of death. So, he makes his life's mission to teach people the value of life by putting their lives in danger with a series of carefully engineered traps. This marked the beginning of a long trail of victims that John would choose because of their wrong actions, completely based on his judgment. Cecil became the first victim and died after failing his test. John would carve out a puzzle piece from the skin of those who failed the tests, and this gave him the name Jigsaw Killer. John turned from a kind and caring man to a sadistic killer who first wanted to teach a lesson to the bad people, but his god complex rose to a level where he forgot he was hurting the innocents while trying to punish the bad people they are associated with. John was even able to manipulate and convince three people to join his missions, two of whom were his former test subjects. Even his ex-wife Jill eventually believed in his methods and began helping him. Other than concealing their identities, the pig mask worn by John and his accomplices pays tribute to the Year of the Pig, the year in which John started his mission. The production made the mask more gruesome with the rotten pig's head in later films to symbolize John's pessimistic outlook of the world and the fact that he is rotting from inside because of his disease. The Miner On the fateful night of Valentine's Day, Harry Warden was working in Hanager Mines with five of his co-workers. The two supervisors were eager to attend the Valentine's Day dance and recklessly left the mine without checking the methane gas levels. This resulted in a methane gas explosion trapping the miners inside the cave. Due to the gas and lack of oxygen, Harry went insane and was forced to survive by feeding on other miners. One year after he was rescued, Harry dressed up as the miner with mining gear and a gas mask and used a pickaxe to kill the supervisors responsible for trapping him in the mine. He then mailed their hearts in a Valentine chocolate box with a note warning the townsfolk that he would kill again if they didn't stop organizing the Valentine's Day dance. He was placed in an insane asylum, where he died a decade later. Twenty years later, the town begins the Valentine's Day dance again, and this time, Axel Palmer takes the role of the miner, having seen the previous one murder his father at a young age. The authorities fail to kill or catch him, as he escapes in the end. The 2009 remake of the film begins with the same storyline as the original one. In this one, the mine owner's son, Tom Hanninger, forgot to close the vent that led to the miners being trapped. Harry wakes up years after being rescued and starts killing whoever comes in his way, including patients and nurses. He arrives in the mine where Tom is partying with his friends, who run away as soon as they see the miner. Tom gets trapped with the miner, but before he could be killed, the police arrive, shooting the miner before he escapes. Ten years later, Tom returns to the town to sell the mine when his father dies, and the murders begin again. In the end, it's revealed that Tom is the real killer, who had no idea that his split personality has committed all 
all the murders. Sam first featured in animated short films. Sam became a horror fan favorite when introduced on the big screen with his cute-looking aura and malevolent personality. He's featured in the film Trick or Treat as a child dressed in an orange Halloween costume with a burlap sack over his head that resembles a pumpkin and a scarecrow mask with buttons for eyes. This adorable kid is revealed to be the literal spirit of Halloween, hiding his demonic pumpkin-shaped skull underneath the sack. He speculated to be a Celtic fairy originating 2,000 years ago related to the Samhain pagan festival of Irish culture. The film depicts four Halloween horror stories, with Sam appearing in each as a kid having fun collecting treats who also acts as a rule enforcer, punishing the people that break Halloween tradition by brutally killing them. His supernatural abilities give him immense powers as he's shown to be invincible. He doesn't die from several gunshots, and his severed hand even walks back to him before reattaching to his body. He has the power of telekinesis and carries pumpkin-shaped candy that he uses as a weapon. Animal Mask Assailants The 2011 slasher film You're Next features a group of assailants who hide behind the animal masks while attacking a family reunion at their isolated vacation home. It's revealed that three of the family members hired the group to kill the family so that they could collect the inheritance. The masked include a fox mask, a lamb mask, and a tiger mask, who are eventually revealed to be brothers. The assailants are, however, caught off guard as one of the women named Aaron, whom they thought would be just another victim, turns out to have been raised by a survivalist. As people die one by one, Aaron uses her survival survival skills, quick wit, and intelligence to meticulously plant traps against the killers and soon overpowers them. The masked assailants soon lose their minds when the tiger mask is killed by Aaron, and their dominance is overtaken by her as she kills everyone involved, including her husband, who is later revealed to have paid people to slaughter his family for money. Leslie Vernon. Leslie Mancuso Vernon, played by Nathan Basil as his film debut, comes from the 2006 mockumentary horror film Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Leslie is both the protagonist as well as the antagonist of the film. He's a psychiatric patient who is obsessed with slasher film villains such as Michael Myers and Freddy Krueger, to such an extent that he wants to be like them. He invites a filmmaker and her crew to document his journey, where he plans his killing sprees as an aspiring serial killer. Very material ridiculous in his ways, Leslie proves to be way ahead of everyone's expectations as he creatively sets up the entire murder plot right in front of the victims. Not much is known about Leslie's childhood, but it's hinted that he started showing homicidal behavior at a young age, and even went for therapy sessions for Dr. Halloran. Growing older, he started aspiring to become a serial killer, and viewing Dr. Halloran as an obstacle, he managed to pull a restraining order against him. He aims to create a terrifying legend of his own as a serial killer, and claims to the film crew that he's possessed by a boy named Leslie Vernon from an urban legend. Vernon killed his parents and was then murdered by the mob who threw him in a waterfall, but he survived and later came back to get revenge. Leslie soon admits that he is a common man named Leslie Mancuso, who would have to opt for normal means to fulfill his mission. He rehearses his killing skills inspired by his serial killer heroes and is mentored by a retired serial killer, Eugene, and his wife, Jamie. Leslie succeeds in creating a legacy for himself when the film turns from a documentary style to a true slasher film as he begins killing people. And here we have him as a legend on our list. Leslie wears a sinister looking mask to follow the footsteps of his heroes as a horror tradition, maintain anonymity, and undergo psychological transformation, most importantly, to mark his legendary masked serial killer debut. Marvelous Verdict. Fun fact for the Supernatural fans out there, we covered both the slasher films the Winchester Brothers appeared in. Sam was in the Friday the 13th remake, while Dean was in the My Bloody Valentine remake. That was it for our list of the most legendary masked horror film characters that we have loved and feared while growing up. Let us know in the comments below which one of these has given you nightmares, and tell us if we failed to mention the masked face that has plagued your dreams. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.